Welcome back to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. MSNBC's Simone Sanders interrupted one of her panelists, former RNC chairman Michael Steele, because Steele had the audacity to use the phrase illegal immigrants. Watch this. What do you tell the parents of those people, those young girls who were killed? This is I mean, absurdity. You, 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 the preponderance you, of these people, what you, what Michael, are the, male. But what is the difference between an, an illegal immigrant who unfortunately engages in that activity. And we don't like that. I want to be clear. And we, and people, we don't use the term illegal. So yeah, we don't, undocumented we don't individuals. Undocumented, That's sweet. They're illegal aliens. Undocumented individuals versus um, anyone else who, who commits the same crime. So I think that's so telling there. That Michael Steele was actually trying to make a point um, in defense of illegal immigrants, and he gets interrupted by someone who ostensibly agrees with him to correct his language, that like the offensive thing you're doing here would be to call them by the wrong terminology. And like, I, you, know, you and I are pretty far apart on the immigration issue. I don't want to deport illegal immigrants. I, I mean, I want to move, I want to change the system so that we can have more legal immigrants. I don't think, I don't care, and I don't think they care. What you call them is like the stupidest and most trivial um, um, issue. It's like, it's so much putting a Band-Aid on a problem to say, well, we didn't change anything about policy or society. We didn't make the lot. We didn't make people safer. We didn't improve the lives of immigrants. But we used a we used a different word that makes us feel better. That is longer and harder to say. It's just more syllables, right? It's the classic PC language is just making language more cumbersome. It's like how many more syllables can we get in this thing? Yeah, I think this is what people are kind of referring to when they use woke in a sort of modernized way that separates it from how it was traditionally used by leftists, which is this idea of these purity tests, where even if you uh, purport to support the right policy, if you don't do it in the right way or use the right language, it's still not good enough for them. And that's exactly what's happening here. Um, they do the same thing with homeless people are now the unhoused. In fact, they've even gone beyond undocumented in some cases and are now using the term newcomers. That was in a Michigan State document referring to housing opportunities for people who came into the country illegally. They refer to them as newcomers. It's all obviously ridiculous. And I think it's even more offensive that she felt like she had to make this correction as they're talking about recent high pro profile instances of illegal immigrants committing crime against native born Americans and really, really heinous crimes, including the rape of a 13 year old in New York City in broad daylight, the rape and murder of a 12 year old in Texas under a bridge by two individuals who were actually stopped by Border Patrol and then released into the United States, as well as the murder of mother of five, Rachel Warren in Maryland, um, Lake and Riley in Georgia. I mean, all of these cases to to make that about using politically correct language about their killers is so beyond missing the point and just really disgusting, I think, uh, to do to those victims' families. I agree about the language. Um, I will say, and of course, all those cases are vile. The perpetrators should be brought to justice. They should be, I mean, they should not be kicked out of the country. They should be put in prison. They should do whatever the, you know, whatever the correct criminal justice system outcome is in those cases. And to my mind, all other cases of violent crime, of murder, of sexual assault. Um, however, it is just like, it's not broadly characteristic, right, of illegal immigrant behavior. I mean, we, you know, we have a crime problem in some cities. Crime went way up after the pandemic, violent crime in a lot of cities. It's come down um, in many places, which is good. It's come down slightly in DC. It's still up versus a couple years ago. We had an extraordinary number of murders in this city last year not being committed by illegal immigrants. They're being committed by the native born population. Um, so it, I, I think there is a focus on illegal immigrants because that sounds scarier, the idea of like murderers coming over our border. Um, some of them, yes, are going to commit violent crimes, but it, it, it is not at all disproportionate to their status or ethnicity. The, like the, the violence problem is, you know, homegrown to our cities is just poor people who live here. But insofar as you can prevent native-born citizens from committing murder, if you can do something to prevent illegal aliens from committing murder, which is not allowing them into the country, like the contention is that these crimes are entirely preventable. Again, with the case of the young girl in Texas, um, which happened, I, I believe, just a, a week or, or less ago, she was uh, grabbed by two illegal aliens who were stopped at the southern border 
given ankle bracelets through the catch and release policy that they're just given a future court date. One of them cut the ankle bracelet off. The other one was actually removed from the detention program after it was found that they didn't have a criminal background. And then they went on to rape and murder this girl. So even if the argument is like, well, we just need to process people better, there's no processing system that is able to tell whether or not someone is going to commit one of these crimes. Um, and if you just are letting millions of people in, inevitably this sort of thing is going to happen. Even if it's 5%, 10% who are criminals, these are all preventable. Well, I mean, it's not preventable, right? Because they're streaming across the border and there's no way to deal with it. And there's 20 million of but them But it's here preventable anyway, it if cost... you shut down the border. Well, that, I mean, I don't border. think that's remotely feasible. Um, I think if we made, if we came up with a system where it was easier for people to come here legally and work and be registered and but be vetted, but there are so many programs not available. Have people coming across, well, there aren't so many programs. There you are so many the, programs. They have they have hard caps on them. They have you have to prove that like no one else could do this job. You it's it's caps by country. It's like if you go through like the spreadsheet or the graphic of all the things you have to prove and do and paperwork you have to sign up. I mean, that's, you know, we, we've oh all gosh, had this experience. Oh gosh, we have to do paperwork to come to the United States and work here. Like, yeah, you should have to I mean, do it that. it takes years. It takes some people years. It's it impossible for It take years to get a seasonal people. visa. It, it's not. It's, but we, we should make that easier because then we can check if these people have criminal backgrounds or terrorist affiliations, and then we can keep them out. If the process is so difficult that the easiest way to come is to either just, is right, to stream across the border, you know, swim across a shallow river, and then claim asylum, and then have this waiting period where you're here and you're not gonna get a court date for forever, and your work status is ambiguous, it seems like the worst of all possible worlds. Well, I feel like you should secure the border first before creating easier legal pathways, considering there are already tons of visa programs available mm -hmm. for workers, either seasonal or otherwise, to come into the United States, including both skilled and unskilled labor, by the way. We have hundreds of thousands of people who successfully use these programs every single year, and yet we're supposed to accept that uh, two to five million coming across the border every year illegally is acceptable because they don't have to go through the programs that these other hundreds of thousands don't have to go through. I mean, one, it's fundamentally unfair to those people who actually do the legal process, and two, I mean, I I know one of your common arguments is that it's good for the economy or good for the GDP to have all of these legal Ill aliens here. It's just fundamentally not the case. They're a bigger they're drain working, on public. It's, it's not because they're a bigger drain on public resources, even if they're working, than they are contributing to the economy. Most of them don't pay taxes for one. The that taxes that they do pay are very after minimal. Study have found they pay more into taxes than they take out of the welfare state. They That's pay not sales true. tax. They pay property tax. They pay tax on rentals. Um, if they're coming here, many of them coming are like you know in their early 20s, so they're already they're not even taking advantage of the public education system. They, they are more likely to work than the native born population. I, I, there was a recent study that I think in, in just the, in just over the course of 10 years that they pay a trillion more dollars into the system than they take out a benefit. It's just not true. I just read a study from an immigration nonprofit that found in 20, between 2018 and 2022, illegal aliens were a net drain, $150 billion a year on, uh, on our, on our uh, economy because they average out contributing about $30 billion in taxes, but from social security, welfare, all of these other uh, social safety net programs, they end up taking about $180,000 or $180 billion back. It's a net drain. Oh, so it might've been the case like 20 years ago that they were no, just people who wanted to work. 2015 to 2023. I, I mean, we, again, we, it's the people already here don't wanna work. And, it, like, and if you don't want to work, I don't want to make a, there's no, I would get rid of our welfare system or lessen it or lessen the benefits. If you don't want to work, I don't think there shouldn't be anything here for you. Um, I don't want to give handouts to illegal immigrants or anyone else. Um, but like right, right now, it's, it's, again, it's the worst of both worlds because we've taken in millions of people and we're not making it legal for them to work. And they're here already. And it's just, you know, you used to say more border security. But like, I guess I just don't have as much faith that the government can do anything right. Like give it this task of stopping millions of people from coming to the country. How much money do they need to do that? It would, to deport is something Republican political figures are talking about. I know J.D. Vance was talking about it just last week. To deport the 20 million in the country, that would cost like a trillion dollars. Is anyone actually willing, like, you know, show of hands to Republicans in the audience, there's no one actually in the audience right now, like who is willing to spend a trillion more dollars of taxpayer money and create a vast new surveillance and security state to deport 20 million people and think there's not going to be significant disruption to our economy, to small businesses? I mean, 
you know, we're like, this is just reality. This is just where we are at and this And this point. is where we fundamentally disagree because I believe that our country is more than just our economy and more than just a GDP. We are a sovereign nation that has laws. And if we don't have rule of law, then realistically, what do we have as a country? And when you're talking about all of these illegal aliens who are here, I mean, we're including people who do have criminal convictions, who do have criminal records in their home country, and we're not even deporting the worst well, of the we can worst. we deport those. I have no problem. We can deport. <laughs> but that's going to cost money. Are you okay with spending okay the millions with of dollars that that's going to cost? I'm totally okay with deporting <laughs> the violent criminals. I don't want to create a new police state to Holloway people's nannies and everything of that. Wait, oh my gosh. So it's just like nannies and people who clean your toilets and like, is that why, just why what illegal aliens are? Why are we disparaging of those jobs? I mean... But it's, it's such a misnomer though, because the if you look at the statistics of who works in these jobs that you're talking about, there's not a single profession in the United States that is majority illegal immigrant. There's not a single profession in the United States that is majority immigrant. They are all majority native born. So you're talking- well, of course, because there's more native, yeah, there's more native born people, but immigrants are disproportionately likely to start a small business. Um, they're just, again, they're- But are you, you're conflating into... legal and illegal. You're right. telling me illegal aliens are more likely to start a small business. more illegal immigrants into the legal immigrant but, category, but this and that is, would take actual reform. This is, this is not a fair comparison, though, because you are taking statistics from a group that has to pass all of these background checks, that has to prove that they are going to be a net benefit to the economy, that has to prove that they are going to potentially start right. a small business, and saying, well, if we just move illegals into that category, then they're going to have the same outcomes. No, because they are sub subjected through our legal immigration programs to all of these stringent restrictions to make sure that they are contributing. You can't just move one category into the other and say, oh, well, they're all just going to start small businesses. I, I don't see why making it easier for the people who are risking life and limb and death in the de desert to come to America, why making it easier for them to come in, in the light of day under a legal process, vetting them aggressively and keeping out people with criminal backgrounds or terrorist affiliations and then letting them work and pay taxes. I mean, that's the story of literally everyone who came to America, unless you came over on the Mayflower. Um, and I don't see why that would be such a problem. It would I just take well, government care to uh, fix it. Well, and I think every person agrees, at least every Republican agrees, that you can have le a legal immigration system but you also have to have border security because the fundamental problem is that you end up incentivizing people to come across illegally if you don't have border security because as you exactly as you said we earlier, can, it's easier yeah. for them to come in and work under the table. They work for low wages. They don't have great, uh, Great. They don't have obviously job benefits. They don't have great working conditions. And what does that do? It undercuts the labor of native-born U.S. citizens. I'm not, I'm not unwilling. Well, I don't care about that. I'm not unwilling. You don't care I'm, that it makes that it brings down wages for people who live here. Bring, I mean, this is the problem. You have to. I mean, you don't have to. But like, for me, like the fundamental you don't disconnect. Have some right. You're not entitled to a wage. If someone else I'm not is willing to do That's the not job what I'm for less at. than you, then. Tough luck. That's not what I'm getting at. What I'm getting at is that I think as a nation, we should have priority for our citizens as opposed to people who have no right being here. I mean, we have uh, New That's York. The, the number one criticism of people right now is inflation. That's how you get inflation, saying there's some artificial right to a job at a certain, I mean, that's that's a leftist argument, and I I'm not. It. I didn't say there I mean, was an artificial uh, right. I'm saying that we should prioritize the needs of American citizens before those of people who are coming from other countries. But some American citizens We're spending, want to hire, the, the, the need of the American citizen is to hire more people. Are, okay. This is just corporations, this is small business owners. Small business owners are not the ones primarily hiring illegal, illegal immigrants. immigrants. I don't know about that. Okay, well, we can look into All it, right. but I, I wanted to make one final point on this because you're interrupting me a little bit. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I think we also just look at what's happened to our nation's city since we've allowed uh, unfettered immigration in the past four years. New York has been spending uh, billions of dollars annually on housing costs for migrants, for illegal aliens. They have tens of thousands of homeless veterans on the streets of our country of New York who have served this country and actually do have a right to some sort of benefit because that is the deal that you make when you join the military. In addition to tons of other people overdosing on drugs and being unable to get housing in our nation's cities. And because we have allowed millions of illegal aliens to pour across the border, it's taking resources away from them. So yeah, I do fundamentally think that that is wrong. We'll have more free media right after this.